I have lived here for more than 20 years now, and uh, I think it's time for me to maybe uh, move on. I felt that Quebec City was home for a long time, but I don't know anymore. I'm 20 years old, and uh, I've lived my whole life in Quebec City. I was thinking about leaving Quebec because here you don't feel welcome, and people want to feel welcome. Life is, is really different. I don't feel like the way I used to feel before. There is Islamophobia in Quebec. We are not gonna lie to ourselves and say, nah, people, they don't, you know, they doesn't exist. Yes, it does. But 19 years ago, I decided to stay and uh, I'm not gonna let someone else change my decision. the 29th of January, 2017. That's something that we can never, ever forget. I remember that that night I was home with my family, even my husband and my son, they were here because they were supposed to go to pray. And my husband said, you know, I'm kind of tired and you know, we're just gonna do our prayer at home. And I was like, okay, that's fine, good. We got a call from my friend, and she said something really, really bad. It's happening at the mosque, and really bad for me. I thought of fire or something, I don't know, but I never thought that someone could go to the mosque and start shooting people and killing people. I couldn't just believe it. Most of the people who died, I knew them very closely. I get very emotional because something tragic happened which did not need to happen. It would take time, it would take a long time to heal from it. I don't want to be recognized because my father is one of the members of the administration council, the mosque who was targeted. Six to seven months after the attack, someone lit on fire our car in the middle of the night. The person who was responsible for the attack was a neighbor. He lived like a three house away from my house. I mean, that's the kind of city we live in. What hit me the most was like, uh, when we announced it to the media, someone said that my father lit it on fire himself. Well, that was particularly uh, disgusting. January 29th tragedy, uh, that was a turning point. But before that, I have noticed that things started degenerating in the society. Muslim being targeted, 
Some were insulted, assaulted with their hijab torn away. Things that never happened before started happening. The radio station started nurturing that hate and rejecting Muslims. And the atmosphere became very poisoned in Quebec City. Things became to change, I believe, since 2013, when the government tried to come up with this uh, charter value. From that time, I felt that, you know, Quebec is not the same as it used to be. The Parti Québécois had that project to not accept a person wearing the religious symbol in the public function. We're talking about scarf, we're talking about the kippah, we're talking about the cross and everything. And it seems to me that they were talking more about the, the Muslim women than anybody else. I don't know, I, I felt it that way. I mean, I feel like a second-class citizen because our voices don't matter as much. People say you have to uh, integrate, but what they mean is you have to uh, delude yourself in the culture that's already there. You have to completely uh, change yourself to fit the person they want. That's not integrating. Integrating is participating in society, working, uh, sharing with people, like normal human stuff, but still being yourself. That's integrating, that's what most people do. So integration is important, but complete assimilation, that's not good to anybody. I have two children who were born and raised here in Quebec City. My son is a basketball player. He likes Quebec City because that's the only place he knows. The friends he has are from here. It will be difficult for me to, to move away, but there is a reality out there, and uh, my feelings are mitigated in some way. My personal experience is similar to many others who have been attacked and uh, insulted in the street for wearing a veil. But I felt like being black and wearing a veil was just <laughs> at the top of, <laughs> at the top of the top, you know, bringing together a race and uh, a religious symbol was kind of just too much to, to the eyes of many people. At the beginning, I was not wearing the veil. I started wearing it long after I came here. The first time I started wearing it, I felt so powerful that day. For some reason, I don't know why. I was walking in the street with pride and confidence. I felt like closer to God somehow, and that was very meaningful. A woman who wears the veil wears it because of convictions, religious convictions. Nobody has asked me to put the veil. Nobody has uh, imposed it to me. I have decided to do that. It is something between the person and God, and God only.
Uh, need to hand out the keys now. <laughs> Before I do that, I need to make sure everything is taken uh, out of the apartment. Every minute counts. Put the light on. So this is where I was last night until probably midnight, <laughs> trying to sort out all the paper, the boxes, all the stuff that was here. Most of this stuff are drawings that the kids did when they were in primary school. <laughs> All this stuff that I don't want to throw away. There are souvenirs. I need to keep this. Quebec City is a great place. There are great people out there. I will miss very, very much all uh, the, the good moments I have shared with people. The Derbali family is the family of one of the victims of the January 29th attack who has survived, actually, and who is uh, on a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Attends, ma chérie, je vais enlever mon manteau d'abord, OK? Non, non. Non? Hmm? Mario, lève ton. Comment je m'appelle, moi? Je m'appelle comment? It's difficult, but the community helped a lot. I, myself, I have taken care of the children, taking them to the park, you know, doing activities with them. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. I love the Derbali family. I will miss them a lot. I will miss the kids a lot. L'islamophobie, ça nous dérange. Pourquoi? Pourquoi ça dérange? Why does the word Islamophobia make us uneasy? Well, it's because it goes to fears. It's been one year now. We are trying to go back to our life, to get back our life as it used to be before. For me, I thought I should do something. I cannot stay home and, you know, cry about it and think about it, but I have to move. I have to do something to help others. Aujourd'hui, je vais vous présenter un mythe ou un préjugé sur la communauté, ce qu'on entend dire sur les, les musulmans. Puis là, vous allez me dire si vous êtes d'accord, oui ou non, qu'est-ce que vous en pensez. Et puis après, on va corriger vraiment ce mythe-là. I got involved with the committee who was in charge of build the bridges between communities and uh, more specifically between the uh, Muslim community and the rest of the society. Maintenant, ce qu'on entend dans les médias, à chaque fois qu'il y a un acte terroriste quelque part, automatiquement, on pense aux musulmans qui arrête d'associer les musulmans aux groupes terroristes que vous ne considérez même pas comme, comme des musulmans. I would insist, please, don't just believe anything you hear about Muslim. Try to go to Muslim people and get all the information you, you want, but get it from the source. Before I start this work, I was kind of Desperate about what's going on, what's going to happen. You know, I just couldn't accept it, and even thought like like so many people, I just leave, go back home, or go somewhere else. Not only for me, but I can't see my kids living in this place when there's a lot of uh, uh, hatred and bigotry and everything.
with this job, with this position, it's like it gave me hope, hope that things will change. I heard about some people live in Quebec. Uh, they just don't feel like it's home, not anymore. Some others like me, you know, I can continue. I still have the, uh, the energy to continue to live here. For my kids, it's their home too. They are born here and I don't see to take them from here and, you know, take them away just because someone else uh, doesn't agree, <laughs> doesn't agree who doesn't like us to be here. The things that happened here are bound to make you think about leaving. Because, like, you were targeted because you were Muslim and you don't feel welcome. It's not even the big things that makes you want to leave. It's the small things. It's not the fear of dying or, or getting hurt. It's more the fear of never feeling comfortable in the place you live. used to work here within the community and within the society and uh, somehow I feel that I should be here. We talked a lot about building bridges in the society and I think we need that. I'm not running away from that, no, no. There are still people who will do that, will keep doing that. I feel sad to, to move and not be here. There's still a lot to be done. A lot has been done, but a lot still needs to be done.